Welcome everybody to the, well not the final chapter, but the, the next chapter to the final. Like I said, the final was actually split up into three chapters, and we're in the second of the three chapters. We just finished the gathering. So our group has come together, and we're kind of reliving some of the moments with Cecil here, and kind of what's been happening through the main story. So you remember Cecil's kind of got a little bonkers, and he was acting very, very strange. And basically right now we're just kind of finding out, yeah, Cecil's learning that he, he can see what he's doing, but he can't quite control what he's doing. And I guess, I guess right about this point, close to the end of the chapter, he's kind of starting to break free a bit, but still, he... he he can't control himself. Yeah, kind of the, the darkness is taken over him. So I'm guessing this is kind of a little retrospect into how... What Golbez was kind of like from the previous game. Golbez must have kind of felt the same. Trapped in the armor. Couldn't break free. He, he could see what he was doing and he kind of knew what he was doing. But he, he couldn't stop himself. Kind of like a nightmare, I guess. So yeah. Cecil's kind of a little loopy at the moment. So here we are on the lunar whale. Heading to the moon. So Cecil's going to be, like I said, he's going to kind of be out of it for a while. Not quite regained all of his head. Not quite regained all of his senses, but yeah. So yeah, he takes on... It's kind of like they switched the roles between Golbez. I mean, Golbez kind of had that minor moment of darkness in his heart when he was young. And Zemus, or Zeromus rather, kind of exploited that, that little piece and... It just went snowballing from there. And the mysterious girl is kind of having the same effect on Cecil right now. So. Yeah. So that's kind of what's been going on. So here everybody's checking up with the walkie-talkie plant. Walkie-talkie tree. I don't know. Uh, the walkie tree. Um, walkie-talkie tree? I don't know. It's it's the whisper weed. That's what it is. Um, they're finding out that things on the planet aren't going the greatest. The planet's kind of a little going kaboom. The, yeah, the, the moon's gravitational pull is kind of causing people to go crazy. Animals to cats and dogs living together, mass chaos and all that crap. Uh, yeah, not, not. Earth is not good, so we really, we really have to save the planet. We are in serious trouble here. If not, I guess we could live on the moon. I don't know if the moon's, like, trying to collide with the planet, or it's, like, trying to... They keep saying the moon's trying to consume the planet, but whatever. Something's going on. And we're getting on to... That's not a moon, that's a... Oh, actually, it is a moon. That's no moon, that's... A moon. Okay, so it is a moon. Sorry, folks, no death stare. Why the hell would you look at the death star anyways? You know what, never mind. We're being pulled in by the gravity of the moon. Square Enix, you'll notice there's a lot of things with the moon, and they add little things constantly here and there. Some people call it repeating themselves. I like to think of it as a signature. They have this obsession with the moon and having, like, two moons. Uh, I don't think this was the first game of theirs to have two moons. I think there was other games, I think. But I know they repeated it in Chrono Cross and uh, Final Fantasy 9 had two moons. 
Who knows? Final Fantasy X could have had two moons as well. We just never saw it. Same with twelve. So we have landed on the moon. Um. So let's talk about. We can now select any party member we want. So let's find out a bit of information about them. First off, our good buddy Theodore here. Uh, decent attack, decent defense, and pretty good supply of white magic for healing. He can do it all, and, uh, well, he doesn't have black magic, but he is a good all-around character to have, and an always welcome party member. Kane, good old Kane, decent for fighter. He has some pretty good white magic abilities, uh, and his defense is pretty good, as well as his attack, but he is not so great in the magic defensive department. Uh, best to heal outside of battle with him. Pretty quick too. Golbez, he's a pretty good fighter, really good stamina, uh, okay HP. Uh, he does come with a supply of really good magic, so if you want to boost him up with rods and stuff like that to cause a lot of damage with his black magic, always good. So he's a, he's kind of the opposite of Cecil, but he he favors a bit more in the magic department than the physical attack. Cecil here. One of the strongest characters, and one of the most defensive characters, and one of the highest HP. He's also fairly quick, as well as his cover ability will allow you to protect healers. At this point, do not use him as he is screwed in the head, and he has really, really slow, as well as he will either not attack or be really, really slow, or really, really weak. Rydia here, not the strongest black magic user, as well as she learns black magic a little slower. Um, her, she also has less MP, but her biggest merit is the summons that will cause really good damage to multiple enemies for decent MP cost. So not too bad, especially the bomb summon does really, really well. However, she is a little slow. Most of the mage characters are fairly slow. Uh, your Rosa, your prominent white mage user, she learns white magic faster than anybody else. Uh, she doesn't... She's a little less on the spirit and a little less on the MP, but she has decent def well, oh, well, a little better defense than other mage users. But she has really good attack for attack uh, mages if you equip her with a bow. Keep in mind she is fairly slow, especially when you want to cast off those heals. So prepare accordingly and bless. She should be using bless most of the time. Edge. Not much uh, anything bad I can say about this guy. He's got really good defense, really good offense. He's one of the fastest characters, and just all around great guy to have around. He also has, I believe, the most bands, so you can find almost any character he will be able to perform a band with. Not all of them, but he'll be able to perform it with at least one person in the party. Porum here, your most dedicated magic user, equip him with rods to boost his intelligence. He will cause a lot of uh, black magic, a, a lot of damage with his black magic, especially if they hit the elemental weakness. Not only that, um, he has the highest HP, uh, MP than anybody else. He is a bit weak in the attack and the defense department. Uh, yeah. He also learns spells almost 10 levels earlier than Rydia. So yeah, I think he learns his final spell Meteor at 55. Porum, our next white magic user. Uh, a little better in the spirit, white magic power than Rosa and is more effective healer. Little more MP, but she is a little weaker and not as much defense. She also learns white magic at a little uh, slower rate as well. Luca, good defense, good offense. A little slow, but all around decent character. As well as she can attack from the back row, taking even less damage with her big throw ability. Sid. Um, Sid is really one of the strongest attackers, one of the can take the most punishment in defense, even from magic. Well, magic's still a little bit weak compared to other magic users, but not too bad for a physical fighter. As well as he has some of the highest HP. Excellent character and he can sustain a lot of punishment. Only problem is, he's the slowest, and it is recommended that you cast haste on him if you're going to use him. 
Edward, do not underestimate Edward. First of all, his bard song could be used to buff up your party if you like to take chances. As well as his hide ability can be used when dealing with some of the enemies who have really strong uh, ability hit all party members attacks. It could keep your party alive and going. Second of all, his salve ability, especially used in conjunction with the economical ring, you'll be able to use a, a high potion with the economical ring doubling it for a thousand point heal to all your party members. Now it will use five high potions, which are pretty cheap at this point because you're getting a lot of gil, and he will heal them instantly. He'll also be able to revive with five phoenix downs, uh, X potions, any healing items. He'll be able to use them all on all the party members, healing them instantly. Really good healer, if you have the money. Young, the strongest attacker, hands down, highest HP, really good defense, though he lacks the magical defense, does take a bad hit. His cover counter will allow him to take hits for weaker party members, allowing him to get more hits in. Always good, always effective. And his focus will allow you to deal with those annoying uh, counter-attack enemies. The Evelyn 4, each of these guys are mostly just a replacement for other characters. Sukunawa here, fastest character in the game, will often take almost two to three turns compared to some other characters. Little weak, can't really take a hit too well, but he has a Mirage ability as well as Boomerang, so he can use from the back row, always recommended. And he's basically just a stripped down version of Edge. Not too bad of a character, not very strong, but good in a pinch. As well as he can run from battles. Geku here, slowest of the Evelyn 4, but he can take the most punishment as well as has the highest HP. Because of this, his Payback Wave Ninjutsu will allow you to do like 6,000 points of damage to an enemy if, they, if he's in the red. Really good ability, as well as he can throw shurikens for like 3,000 to 6,000 points of damage, which you can buy here. Not a bad character to have. Zangetsu, mostly lightning damage, not much. Uh, he can do a bit of crowd control with flash. As well as he's really good for taking on aerial enemies. He's basically, uh, basically a replacement for Kane. Nothing special, a little low in the defense. Uh, not too fast. Zaiwei, another fast character. It's basically the mage version of the ninja, uh, the Evelyn 4. She's also a healer, a decent healer. She is probably the weakest in terms of defensive. She can also use cro do crowd control with whips to paralyze enemies. Other than that, nothing special. Uh, Ursula here is a little faster than her old man. She's not as powerful and she can't take a hit as well, as well as she's got a little lower HP. But her chakra will allow you to keep strong defensive parties alive for no MP cost. As well as their Tetsekku, whatever special ability, will we'll either do a regular attack, a critical attack, or attack with the elemental causing extreme damage. Harley here. Harley, uh, her not the greatest. Her She has some okay offensive capabilities. She can use her whips to paralyze enemies and do crowd control. Um, or whips to cause that, or sorry, not whips, but arrows to do status effects. Uh, if she's really expensive, but you can throw guild to cause good damage to enemies. So if you got a lot of guild to burn, not too bad. As well as her piercing sight will add extra elemental weaknesses to enemies. So if you can find them out, not too bad of a character to have around, but not the greatest. Next is Leonora. Leonora is basically a white, a red mage, focusing more towards the white mage part. Uh, she can't quip very much. She can quip both rods and stabs to boost uh, to boost up her magic power, but as well as bows and arrows, but not that great. Um, she learned white magic quicker, and her black magic is really slow. She also doesn't learn all the black magic, just mostly the attack spells. She also has half the MP, and her defense and HP are really not the greatest. But I believe she is faster than other mages. Kalka, 
Um, he will use enemy abilities jive, which will randomly cast enemy abilities, which can be useful or not so useful. Randomness, not the greatest character to have along, well, mostly just if you want a challenge. No, those are cherries, you can sleep in them. Birana, she will cast, if you use her dance ability, she will cast random white magic for free, but it is random. So that's a brief introduction to all the characters. In the next episode, I should have my party set up, and then we will take off on our Great Moon Adventure. Thank you for watching, and have a good day. Bye now. I'm out of breath.